yummy, yummy, yummy. Fruit salad. Welcome, dear viewer, to this new segment, which from now on I'm going to call In the Same Boat. Of course, because my guest and I are in the same boat, but also to acknowledge that being in the same boat has a lot to be said for it. Not least for the many social situations you can more or less depend on. It's unlikely, for instance, that we'll get a phone call saying, Gina and Tim are divorcing. Please don't say this, please do that, very socially awkward. Nor are my many long-term male friendships likely to be assaulted by veganism or the environment, whereby Billy of old suddenly becomes insufferable in small talk. This is not to say, of course, we don't hold strong views. For myself, I probably score quite high on many environmental issues, and I have flattered myself to think that one day I would politely decline some Greta Thunberg award for yielding, well-rounded human beings at incredibly low cost relative to European costs on the environment. More, I think, it's how we exercise those strong views. And that, I put it to you, dear listener, is with qualities inherent to the United Kingdom, those of firmness of will guided by a moderation. I say all this, dear viewer, or it is with these qualities and this is that where I we join in the boat, in the same boat, through a load of reef. yesterday. What do you think? Through the reeds? Yeah, through the reeds, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Tally ho. Off we go. Do you often go out by yourself, Peter? And just... I wouldn't say I go out by myself now. No? It'd be kind of missed opportunity with the kids if I got by myself. I hear you. They'd get annoyed with me. Huh? They'd get annoyed with me. Yeah, I'd say just let it drift there. Um, yeah? You don't want to get set up. Alright. We're now going that way. Okay, we're going to do that. I'll do a bit of rowing. Yes, please. Ah. Come on, yeah, let's give it a bit of welly. Yeah? Yeah, doing brilliant. Doing great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Through these fields of destruction Baptisms of fire I've witnessed your son So what way would we go to stay left now, this side? Trooper thought you should really sit in the... Uh, no, in fact, you're fine where you are. You sure? Yeah, yeah. Lovely and still. It is lovely, isn't it? Yeah.
Right, we'll get through this tree and we'll get on with it. Right then. We'll get past this tree and we'll get to it. Yeah. Lovely willow. It is a gorgeous tree, isn't it? Yeah. A spiritual tree. It is. Now we've pierced the veil. I'm presuming soon I'm going to have to make an attempt to turn round. You are running. Uh, after this tree. That might be. After this spiritual tree, through the veil. To Pierce reveal. the veil. This could be challenging for me. Yeah, what, keep it low. Yeah, that's it. You, Would you just fine. spin your legs out? Yeah, yeah. I'll keep, I'll keep his balance. There we are. There's, ah. there's no manual. Just gotta do there this. isn't. Do as you see fit. Right, let's not. I'll leave it for you. Yeah. <laughs> A seasoned canoeist. So I'll leave your trusty hands uh, at the steerage of the ship. Yeah, it's pretty clear up there. So today we are joined, dear viewer, by my new friend Ronnie. Very new. Indeed. Very Ronnie. Indeed. Uh, now Ronnie fits the criteria of being on this Do I? podcast. Yeah, because you're from my parish. I shouldn't even say parish now because we're moving. I should say community or fraternity or something like that. Yes. Uh, brotherhood. Yeah, brotherhood. Uh, just to show that the old mass is attracting guys between the ages of 20 and, I don't know, 50, which... So that seems to be a trend right now. Well, I don't want to say anything because you're so new and unadulterated by the I am church situation. I don't, want to, I don't want to twist uh, your opinions in any way. You know, let's just hear it fresh from you. I'm a sovereign individual you'd struggle to. So I almost don't know anything about Ronnie. I know your name's Ronnie. Jamie brought Jamie can't be with, with us here today. He's kind of a convert as well, young fella. Yeah. From our parish. Uh, he's got a hernia up or something. Yes. Uh, but keen to get Ronnie before he's even two weeks into it. Uh, yeah, that was my it. first ever Latin Mass on Sunday just and past. First ever Mass? No, I've been attending Mass on and off for the past nine months. Yeah. Uh, how come? Um, well, my, my, my girlfriend's family are Catholic. She was raised Catholic. Yeah. So I got introduced to the Catholic Church like Christmas Mass and Easter Vigil last year and then... So for the first time this year, so you've not been... No, probably 2022 Christmas Mass. And where would you... Uh, what kind of level of seriousness would you put your girlfriend at? In terms of Catholicism? Uh, in terms, yeah, does she go to Mass every week or is she just no, taking you at Christmas or Easter? No, interestingly enough, so she was obviously week in, week out as a child. Yeah. And interestingly enough, I was raised without religion. Yeah. I'm being drawn towards it. And she's just come out of a phase, probably, but she's 27 now, maybe between 18 and 25, where she'd almost strayed from it a little bit through feeling, I don't know, like once she got the freedom to choose other than have to go, I feel like maybe I met her and she had negative connotations of her childhood experience with Catholicism. But I've been drawn to it and we're now, yeah, and it's her a strange being, dynamic. Her being religious or not religious, was it, it didn't attract you to her? No. So just, just boy meets girl? Yeah, boy meets girl and... No religious issue on, on Not the at all, no, because at the time... What age are you? If you don't I'm 27. Answer. Right. At the time I met her, I'd only just started to develop a personal relationship with God, not even in a religious aspect, but exploring prayer and meditation and coming to terms with the grip that maybe I need a higher power in my life. Before that, I hadn't really ever had any concept of God. Uh, go on, if you, without speaking uncharitably in any way about your parents, they were atheist or um, C of E I'd religious. say my dad was atheist and I'd say my mum was agnostic. Yeah. And they weren't saying, Ronnie, 
there is no God, don't be stupid. No, they weren't like, there was not really any... When you were, I mean, growing up as a child, I suppose. No, there wasn't formation. really, God wasn't really ever a conversation in my household. Right, 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 right. What would be, would it be classic, what I might call modernity, you have to earn money, you have to kind of, and normal stuff as no, well. No, not even that. My father is a bit of a maverick and anti-establishment, yeah. so the, the main conversation in the household would be... Vote Labour. No, <laughs> don't vote at all, and just condemning the Western world and its politics. He, he, he had a decorative career, like, travelling the world, so he's experienced many different cultures but he was just anti-establishment. And he had a strong worldview, would you say? Strong, yeah, very much But so. it didn't involve God in any no. way? He would have seen God then on his travels, like religious cultures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't get the hook in him? No. Yeah, strong worldviews, but not, not any that really ever considered God. Right, right. And probably if you'd brought God up to him, he might and roll his eye. Roll right, his, right. Yeah. He's he, not very open-minded. He likes to think himself open-minded, but... And would he be, you've got to watch this guy on YouTube or watch this on YouTube, or he'd just be his own guy with his no, own No, just mind. be his own guy with his own tales yeah. of his own life experiences that often involve... The type of guy that's made up most of human history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And get on with your parents? No, I had a quite... I mean, I get on with my mum, and now I get on with my dad, but my childhood was very turbulent. Right. There was a lot of domestic warfare. We'll leave that for now. Let's yes. get back on to <laughs> Ronnie considers God. Yes. What got the hook in you? So, I don't know if you're familiar, but I'm July 2022, two years ago. Sorry, I, I, ent just, just I entered on. the 12-step fellowship to recover from addiction. Yeah. Um, and a major facet of those 12 steps is that there's other, other actionable parts of it, but a major running thread is to do this, if you want to get and stay sober, you must come to rely on a higher power of your own understanding. Yeah. Not from a religious standpoint, just get a God. Get your God. Right. And if you don't mind me asking, addiction, drinking, Well, drugs. from the age of 14, yeah, cannabis, and then alcohol, and then from the age of 18, cocaine as well, very, struggled a lot with cocaine addiction between the ages of 18 and 25. Expensive habits, Ronnie. And very much so, but on the 3rd of August, so a week on Saturday, I will be officially two years clean and sober. Congratulations. Yeah. So yeah, that's what introduced me to fathoming that I might need to um, form a relationship with God. And what were other guys, were there other people in the group? Yeah, yeah. And then were they like, yeah, God, okay, whatever, I'll just do it. Yeah, that's kind of how it starts. Right, and were you the same? Yeah, I've got to yeah, do some kind of Yeah, some have thinking. a religious background, others don't. Yeah. Some, like, really struggle with it, others embrace it. And I just started embracing it, but not from a religious standpoint. But when I got told, like, you need to try and say some prayers in the morning and start meditating, I was on my knees the next day and start, you know... Ronnie, I was on my knees. I should have warned week. you about that brown stone now. That's okay, there. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just started praying to something that I didn't know what. Of your was, own volition, or you were in, instructed to? I was encouraged to pray, but not given set prayers oh. or any instructions. By the 12 steps leader? Yeah, or not the leader. It. How it works is other addicts that have oh, recovered, right. you kind of get a mentor that tells you how to do it. So he says, I suggest you just start experimenting with prayer in the morning. No more than that. And you bought what they were saying. It yeah, wasn't kind of ins These people are not insincere, I imagine. No, they're not. They're people that have gone through the same experience yeah, yeah, yeah. and come out the other side and just offer loving help. Russell Brandle talking a lot in these kind of ways. Yeah, he's 20-something years in a 12-step fellowship yeah. and recently got baptised. Mate, recently got baptised. Yeah. Uh, so go on, talk to me about saying some prayers. Well, you know, it started off very simple and futile, I suppose, but it's like, God, I don't really know what, who I'm talking to right now, but could you help me stay clean and sober today? Can you help me do the next right thing today? Can you just help me out? I'm in Mate. trouble. <laughs> Mate, great prayer. It's yeah. Daily, it's a daily, look, welcome to the party. It's a daily yeah. struggle. You know, you wake yeah. up, you say your prayers, you go to bed and you do all the same again. Um, yeah. It's not. But it's, 
Yeah. You don't say one prime, that's you for the year. No, no, no. Yeah, you're in the fight. Oh. And then throughout throughout the 12 step, as you go through these 12 steps, I actually very early on got introduced to the St. Francis prayer. And I've said that every day for go the on. last two years. St. Francis prayer being? Being, um, yeah, I should have warned you. I will warn you next time. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Yeah. Where there is offence, may I pardon, and so on. Yeah. My old man used to, I, I'd wake up in the morning, my old man would be saying that every day. Yeah, I say uh, it every day now. Yeah, yeah. And then you, there are a few more prayers come along as you go through the steps. Keeps you humble. Yeah. And now my prayer, like, I mean, we'll get to now, but now it's massive. So, for me, as an individual. So this is what two years ago. Yeah. I would say that great prayers. You made a great start. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are you? So you send some prayers. Are you noticing any answering of the prayers? Well, considering the fact. In a way that you would like, people would say God answers your prayers by. Considering no. the fact that I've been sober ever since, and yeah, God's had His loving hand on me, but even before that before I realised, but now there's like, I feel like this journey I've been on for the past two years is like concrete, undeniable evidence that God is working in my life. I know that he was way before, but now I can like, well. Well, go on, tell me about the before, well, looking back with hindsight. With hindsight, I wouldn't necessarily pick out any specific experiences or examples, but no, coming to now things. know what I understand of God, yeah. I realised that he was, he can never not be there. Yeah. <laughs> So you've uh, it made a clear passage. You're not going to get hit by nothing. That's okay. While. I'm ready for the flat battle. So you're saying the prayers. Your habits changing. You, is your lifestyle getting more religious? <coughs> Would you? Yeah, I, I suppose I wouldn't say no. religious. Good, better, more good. Yeah, absolutely. Like. Are you um, losing bad habits. Losing bad habits. Breaking free from addiction. Prayer and meditation in the mornings. Um, and starting to also get encouraged through the 12 step route to consider concepts and try to practice principles that I'd been unconscious of. Simple ones, you know? Go on. Selflessness. Yeah. Oh, the world doesn't revolve around me. Was that a <laughs> revelation to you? Unfortunately, at the <laughs> time it was. <laughs> yeah, because in addiction, you're so consumed in your little egoic bubble that it, you know, you're just running on self-will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's self-will run riot. Parents notice any change? Massively, of course. And are they saying anything to you? Yeah, my mum's hugely supportive of me. My dad is encouraging, but not as much as my mum. He doesn't like put me down for it, but I've got a better relationship with my mum, I suppose. And then also other principles like going through almost like a confessional steps of making like an inventory of all the harm you've ever caused anyone, all the resentment you've ever held towards anyone. And this is all from the 12 steps? Yeah, program. yeah, yeah. Guidance from uh, that Yeah, program. the 12 steps, if you look into the history, is directly out of the Bible. It was started by the Oxford group. I don't know if you've heard of them, but no, the, no. they're Christians. Well, people America. are clearly taking it seriously. If, Christians if you're, in America. If you're doing this kind of stuff, it's very yeah, serious stuff. Yeah, all the harms you've ever caused anyone, all the resentment you've ever held, all the fears you've ever had share it with someone so step five is admitted to god admitted to myself to god and another human being the exact nature of my wrongs who is the lucky other that person. my sponsor which is a mentor right a, a, a fellow recovered addict that just did it before i did and yeah. then showed me what he did and now i show other people what i did it's a they is he or she spurred on by you he yeah because often way, addicts go back into yeah two-way relationship so yeah. step 12 what he'd have been practicing at the time is now you know how to do it, help other people. And are you still in touch with all these people? Yeah, I was best man at his wedding. Oh, mate, awesome. Yeah. Um, and then you go out and make amends to people that you've harmed. A bit like My Name Is Hell, if you've seen that programme. No, where what's you the just start knocking on doors and, or, or sending messages or making phone calls saying, look, I've reviewed my life and I realised that I harmed you in X, Y, Z way at this time. How Is do people any... take that? Some, some people are very Jump off a cliff. open, other people don't respond if it's a Facebook message to someone you've not heard yeah. from for five years. Take a bit of guts doing all that. Yeah, willingness, you have to be willing. And then clear, it's like just, you're unblocking yourself from the spirit. 
and I suppose no one checks up when you're like, Ronnie, have you done any homework? But you just got, you can't fool yourself with something. Yeah, ultimately. you either do it or you don't. Do it or you don't. You either want to get sober and do whatever it takes. Get busy living. To leave us to lead us more spiritual life. Because what I've come to realise now is all that indulgence in consuming substances was only me desperately seeking out a higher power anyway, just disguised. Yeah, people. I, suppose, I, I hear people say that. I think, yeah, whatever. But you would acknowledge that. Yeah, uh, uh, you're not conscious of that at the time, but there's a yearning to feel ease and comfort. That's why you do it. You're in pain. You want to feel ease and comfort. You don't have God in your life, so you have to use worldly pleasures. And now that you're getting into the business end of a higher power, uh, I not, di- not disappointed. Not at all. With where you've arrived. Transforming my life. If you'd have told me two years ago that I would be seriously considering a baptism and, you know, educating myself on becoming a Catholic, I would have ridiculed you for it. I don't sense that you've got any kind of strong prejudice against religion. I think I, I think they've peeled away slowly over the past two years. I think so. Would you be... a kind of aggressive atheist? It's hard to tell. Never an aggressive kind of athe- atheist, but probably... Maybe more new age spirituality I'd have been more inclined to kind of follow and probably have in the past. Like, you know. A good friend of mine would say a lot of those kind of people are kind of ripe for conversion because they have got at least a spiritual outlook. And, and that was me. I was never atheist. Yeah. But I'd probably like, oh, I need to go explore shamanism or this You wouldn't be into institutionalised religion sitting on a pew no way that would have been my last option right that's, but, that seems to be <laughs> like, institutional religion gets kind of bad name because I, I would have had this prejudice that says watch out there just the thorny bushes I would have had a prejudice against Christianity and particularly Catholicism that probably says oh that's not loving all these strict rules and conditions mate there's a lot of strict rules yeah all this all that strict rules and conditions and it's our ways right and everything else is wrong god how one-dimensional and closed-minded they are yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. i'd have said that's what i'd have thought and you can see the argument why people say that I yeah think, i think it's look, fair enough but it is like that for good reason yeah which i'm slowly coming, coming to comprehend and well, ronnie we may enter some difficult conversation later in this chat uh, okay. Possibly. Uh, anyway, look, people laugh. I hope we don't get rained on here. Anyway, look, let's keep going. So you're you're getting into it. You're saying the St. Francis prayer. You're doing some reading now? I'd not to start with. So for a while, it, there was no Christian element to it until I started bumping into Christians in recovery and around recovery. Which is probably not uncommon. No. And then getting invited to like worship festivals or a Sunday service. So I went to Pentecostal worship festivals. I went to Church of England. Um, just bumping into Christians. Suddenly, Christians, not necessarily Catholics, yeah. started just appearing on the periphery of my life. And I had this, I had this kind of instinct to just connect with them. And when they invite me somewhere, go and explore. Impressed by them. Just curious. It felt like a, too many started coming in around the same time for me to not right, right. connect. So, sure, I couldn't sure. ignore it. Sure. And imp- you... What do you make of the events that you went to then? Pentecostal worship. First one I went to, found it very hard to immerse myself in. Go on. It was just so intense and, you know, all the singing and clapping and... But it's quite demonstrative to say that. And then also, I will say, the two people leading the service didn't feel real. Right, right. It just felt like they were charlatans, brainwashing people. Surely anyone (laughs) anyone that's done 12 Steps would have a good eye for being BS'd by somebody else. Yeah. Seem like there's all these, you know, people just kind of like hypnotised by these charlatans. Not you. No. And no. you didn't think, ah, I'm not hypnotised <coughs> here because I lack a religious background. And if no. I was more religious, you, you sense no, something more than that. No, I was sceptical. It was intuitive. Right. Mate, I'm all about intuition these and days. And I trust my intuition. I should have trusted it more when I was younger. Anyway, here we are. 
So go on. So you you kept moving. Kept moving. And then the Pentecostals didn't get the hook in your. No, off. but then I met another lad, and I did go to a few others, and I tried to like. Although, okay, is this going to cause? It's going to cause electronical failure, total collapse. <laughs> Just get that on there. Be all right. Um, no, I still went to a few, but it didn't hook me in. But at the same time, I tried to just enjoy it for what it was, but made my mind up that this isn't it for me. Yeah. But I'll still go along and be present sometimes, sure. but it didn't last long. And then I suppose my first Catholic experience was with my girlfriend's family, Christmas Mass 2022. Oh. And, and we're her, talking Catholics here, I, mean, I would say classic Catholic. Devout. Oh, they were devout. Her father was once trained to be a priest, but circumstances right, right. schismed that pursuit. So the parents devout, not so the girlfriend? She, well, she was, no, not at the moment, no. But she hasn't really, she doesn't, she hasn't completely abandoned her Catholic background. Yeah, sure, I mean, it's not. She's not completely abandoned it, but she's certainly not a practicing the, Catholic. The jury's still in. She, she's not a practicing Catholic, I wouldn't say, but she still respects it. She'll still, still go to church here and there. Yeah. Well, it's she, a dilemma. Yeah. Millions are in, isn't it? They kind of can't, can't quite reject religion, but not quite diving back into it. Yeah, I think where her father was so heavy on it when they were young. Let's put her off a bit. Yeah. But. So go on, so you, they took you to Mass? Yeah. At what, Christmas? Or yeah, just Christmas Mass. An ordinary Sunday? No, it was, I think, a Christmas one, the first one I mentioned. In Italy? No, it was in Baldock. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. The big Italian community in Baldock, isn't there? I think yeah, so. I think so, yeah, or, Be or Bedford or one of them. Yeah. There is big so her mother's Italian, her father's Irish. Right. So they're both equally Catholic. Ian and what did you make of it then? So you walked yeah. in? Well, at this point, I'm trying to be deliberately open-minded and be aware of any scepticism or cynicism and kind of quiet it in the mind and embrace, embrace new experiences. But I'm certainly not sold at this point. Why not? Don't believe the leaders or I don't want to put words in your mouth, but... Yeah, that and also just not ready to accept that... I'm trying to... I'm tr at this point, I'm trying to understand and somehow practice the abstract concept of surrender and surrendering my will which is a whole nother conversation yeah. that everyone's trying to learn to do <laughs> <laughs> and um, it's a difficult stop. journey yeah, right difficult. so i'm trying to be open but also i've just come off the back of 25 years of not having god in my life therefore believing that i run the show yeah. so to let go of that belief Take some time. Take some time. <laughs> no one would recruit you. <laughs> that fact. Uh, I'm. I write the script. I direct the play. I'm the. I'm the protagonist. And yeah, I'm coming out of that. But now I feel like, especially recently, I'm definitely coming out of that. Are you concerned? Not mightily. It's, it's been in worse conditions. Let me tell you that. Okay. So, Gordon, you're in the Catholic Church. You're not. You're not willing to surrender basics, would you say? Because look, we all struggle yeah. surrendering. Yeah, and I'm still not fully surrendered. I don't think, but I'm getting there. We'll get to that, Ronnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm praying and meditating. And one thing I do know. That impressed through, by the mass or impressed? I don't like it. I'm hesitating uh, to put words in your mouth. Not Was it just, really. I wouldn't say impressed. Just respectful of it. Right. More charlatans in the... No, but then, obviously, outside of the Catholic Church, I mean, this is a conversation we definitely don't have to go into, but you hear things of sure. evil nature... Yeah, yeah, sure. ...that Catholic really... Church's recent history is... ...that really yeah. give you a resistance to... ...and a suspicion. Yeah. I'd say I have a, had a suspicion at this point. Yeah, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Think. Okay. Let's do it like that. Got some you gorgeous okay? swans. Do you need help? Would you like any assistance? I know you. Should... Thank God, I've got the motor it's still on. <laughs> you want me to do something? Yeah, go on. Push it out of the bank there.
the back. That's it. Yeah? Yeah. That's it. So you've gone to mass, is your girlfriend pestering you? What do you think of that? Blah, blah, blah. Are you uh, going to be comforting now? Or is it not on it? You didn't yeah, care. Yeah, we have a chat. We have conversations about it through our rela throughout our relationship yeah. about mass and Catholicism. And I ask her questions about her experience and she gives me them. And she doesn't, she doesn't ever, you know, I wouldn't say sell it to me or put me off of it. She right. just does, tells me her experience, you know? But that's not what got you to... Latin Mass on a Sunday. No way. <laughs> so how far off we, how far off we from? Well, Latin I'd Mass say over Sunday? the next year, you know, one thing I'll say is I'm now going church on the odd occasion with my girlfriend, but to the Catholic Church or any church? To, no, to the Catholic Church at this point. And when you go in, do you, because do you find yourself adhering to customs that p other people are doing or are you just standing up the whole time and everyone's... No, I join in, I immerse, I'll sing... You've I'll... no resistance on that No, level. I've got no resistance on that level. So I, I would say that is a kind of surrendering that's gone on yeah, there. Yeah, starting to, You're prepared yeah. to bend the knee? Yeah, bend the knee and I'll go up and get the blessing and I'll sing and I'll, you know... Somebody's instructed you not to take communion? Yeah. Oh, good, and you've obviously accepted Yeah, my girlfriend. All <laughs> oh, right. so look, that, I yeah. would say that is some level of, not, of surrendering. Yeah. You know, you're not... Don't take the communion. Yeah, you're not taking the mick. No. That's good stuff. But I wouldn't have known that. Had her and her sister not informed me, I'd have gone up and had yeah, it. Sure. They'd just said, by the way, you can't, you know, you've got to do that. So they're, they're serious <laughs> about their faith. Oh, her to sister, her to older sister's still very serious. My girlfriend's still married? got potential. Yeah, she's married. To, yeah, yeah, she's married. She, she had her second child not long ago. Congratulations. Yeah. And then the younger two are still in the church because they're not quite hit 18 yet, so they go with their mum and dad. That's good. Look, they still could make it. The second, third and fourth are kind of one foot in, one foot out, but the eldest is fully in. Religion's making a comeback on this. Yeah. Uh, so going to so your surrendering a bit. And just basically, the main thing that's expanding consistently throughout this period is my prayer life. And then start and I got and throughout this period I get given a mini New Testament by not a Catholic. Sharp who? Um the guy that took me to the first Pentecostal. Oh, he left me with a New Testament and somewhere along the line I decide to start reading it. So it's a while before you sit down to it? Yeah, maybe it's like six to nine months, maybe just over a year ago or a bit before that. But I keep throughout this time my prayer life's expanding and I just keep picking up and What's put, expanding? The type of prayers you say? Or the, the type frequency? of prayers, the frequency I pray throughout the day. No longer is it, I'm going to say these prayers for 10 minutes in the morning then forget about it till tomorrow morning. Now I'm starting to instinctively do it throughout the day depending on what's going on around me and, and feeling like I've actually opened up a two-way relationship. Whereas at first I felt like I was just praying into the abyss and it was just me saying things but I wasn't receptive to anything back. But now it's starting to feel like I've got conscious contact with God. Mate. Surrendering of the will is going on, right? Yeah. I would say anyway, I'd say that. Uh, yeah, what are, what are loved ones and close ones saying, Ronnie? Give it a break. Um, Shut up. I'm you? not really put, I'm not really, it's, I'm Just not, a, it's a private affair. I'm You're not private really individual. marauding around saying right. much. It's a private affair. Sure. Unless someone asks. When did you sit down to open the Bible? Was it late at night or? work up one day yeah and I used to take it on the train when I commuted to London because I was often like surrounded by people on their iPhones and staring at screens and having trivial conversations that I just thought oh what's going on so I used to take my little and actually read a lot of it on the train to London and back would you say that's spiritual growth that you're kind of rejecting I suppose what would you call it trivial pop conversation yeah I mean I always have done to some extent but now it's even more unbearable. Get that off your old mind? Yeah, heavily influenced, yeah. But he'd be kind of reject BS chat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And can, like, put people down for it. Oh, right, right, I see, I see. Yeah, you don't do that, do No, I don't. <laughs> it's good I don't. that you it's it, good. it is developed into an arrogant. Sure, it's good that you build on the virtues of your father. Yeah, yeah no for bad sure. Thing. No bad thing. Yeah, no, not at all. Uh, so look, prior life increasing, are you meeting new people off the back of this prayer life? Yeah, here and there. 
That's not really a relevant part of the story. I don't think though. so. It's been a personal journey. Until, yeah, and then I'd say up the past nine months from where we are today, just the prominence of Jesus Christ in my mind has just grown. Off the back of the New Testament, would you say? Um, all of it. Yeah. The New Testament, the prayer life, the experiences in various churches, and then maybe some YouTube videos and bits of research and listening to priests deliver homilies on YouTube. Go on, what just, priests and what people? Uh, um, if you don't mind me asking. No, Bishop Barron. Yeah. And also, I think, an Orthodox one, Mari Manuel. Emmanuel what? Mari Mar Emmanuel. Bishop Barron may take, may take some issue at not being called Orthodox. Oh, do you mean Eastern Orthodox? Eastern ah, Orthodox. Right, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, Eastern good, Orthodox. Good. Just came up in your timeline. Yeah. So bits of that and then... Any contemporary figures that like Brand or other... Yeah, kind of... Brand, I'd say, has inspired me recently. Definitely. Does his baptism predate yours? It doesn't, does it? No, I've not... Oh, you've not been baptised I've yet. not been baptised yet. I've only just got in touch to start pursuing it. That, so, as I say, last nine months, just the idea of now when I'm praying, I'm, I'm also calling on the name Jesus. So that won't happen in the beginning? No, not for a long time. How long before Jesus made an appearance? Maybe like a year or right. just, yeah. Until that, before that, it was just God or Lord. Not a bad start, right? Yeah. And yeah, I'd just say over the last nine months, the presence of Jesus Christ in my mind and spirit, I suppose, has just become ever more overwhelmingly noticeable. Made any purchases like the crucifix or yeah, the crucifix? Pictures? Yeah, crucifix. <coughs> yeah. Also got given a gift by my girlfriend's dad, um, which is a little wooden crucifix made out of olive tree from Jerusalem, oh, which awesome. I started carrying around with me a lot. Has your girlfriend's dad made her more of a beeline for you? No, <coughs> but also very open should I approach him to discuss. Right. But not like... Come on, Ronnie, you need to no, do this. No, not at all. Uh, not at all. Crucifix. And then of recent, brought some spiritual writings from authors like i've been reading the imitation of christ by Kemp. tough Pierce. read yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you can get through that you've got a great future i have been I only, read, I only read one of the short chapters a day it's a lot yeah no do. the utmost for, for his my utmost for his highest don't know that I'm oswald not, chambers just a daily reading i'm not so well read as my contemporaries um augustine i'm not open that yet augustine of hippo confessions confessions yeah, yeah. Uh, the writings of St. Francis. Not so, all very Catholic books. Yeah. Is this, is, is this Ronnie has arrived in? I think so. Catholicdom. I think so. And I'm starting to. And, and now I've got my... Well, I, this is... I don't know. Maybe this is a confessionary moment. But I stole my first full Bible from a monastery in Kent. Just send him one of those Facebook messages, Ronnie. Saying, Maybe oh, I should. So of recent, I've actually started, I put my mini new condensed New Testament down and for the past three, four, five months, um, I've been attempting to read the Old Testament, but it's a slow process. What's after Genesis? It's not Leviticus, Ooh, is, is it? it? Exodus? Exodus. Maybe. I've got through Genesis and Exodus maybe. and I've made a start on Leviticus, but that's a real slow burner. Have you, have you <laughs> come across, Jordan Peterson got pretty famous off the back of his... Reflections on Genesis. I haven't seen that. He didn't done any of that. No. He's kind of w one of the kind of figures that has made help make Christian po Christianity popular again from yeah. there. No, Brand, but not Peterson. Christian wise, Christianity wise. So, go on. How far off are we from Bedford Mass eight thirty on a Every Sunday? Every week. No, no. I mean that you arrived at it this Sunday. Oh. Still a bit to go. Yeah. So now. I start, so me and my, my girlfriend went to Italy, um, Sardinia, in the start of July. No, June, start of June. She's gone there for a summer job. And I don't know why, but simultaneously with that, when she went, I decided I'm going mass every Sunday on my own. You did? Yeah, not inspired by While her. you're out there in Italy? Yeah, while you're out, I didn't, it wasn't inspired by her going. Yeah. But it's obviously irrelevant, but 
for some reason. Sorry, you're out there with her. No, it? she's out there now. Yeah, 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 she's yeah. gone. Um, so it wasn't inspired by her going away for summer, but just simultaneously as she went, the idea dropped that right. I'm actually going to go to mass every Sunday on my own now. Yeah. So this is at the start of June, and I was going to St Peter's in Biggleswade, yeah. which isn't a Latin mass. So by now I'm kind of trying to read the Old Testament. I'm reading the Imitation of Christ. I'm praying directly to Jesus heavily throughout the day, and um, going to mass every Sunday on my own, getting a blessing, really engaging, listening to the homily, singing the prayers. And anyone making a beeline for you, or you just going quietly, leave quietly? Yeah, I mean, I have a chat, but no, no one making a beeline. Are you just, making a beeline for anyone there? Are you you kind of well, happy just going? Actually, yeah, I'm just happy going. Yeah. I'm having a chat, but I'm not like totally immersed in community. Sure. I'm just going to like because I feel like I should. And then, funnily enough, so. A week, so I just came to my first letter mass on Sunday. Yeah, any reaction off your bird? You know, you sent her an email, Dib. Oh, uh, yeah, no, nah, she's, she's all for it. I just said, by the way, I'll be going mass, and I'm considering getting baptised when the time feels right. And she's all encouraging for it. She's, you, I, I suppose I'd say, you know, if two people are in love, generally speaking, they'd want each other to be our, uh, in the same boat. Or yeah. on the same mind. So is yeah, there a bit well, of back into like, you don't need to go all week, or yeah, come on, if you thought about going back yourself? Is what, there only, me yeah, saying that to Yeah, her? it's only kind of back into chat like that. Not yet, but I feel like that will come because now she's almost exploring a new age spirituality in ways that I've done previously, and she's into her crystals and reading all, right. all that stuff again, which. Having listened to many a homily and reading the Bible, no, I can't it. condemn her for it, but now I'm starting to think, oh, God, is that actually a bit demonic and stuff like this? Yeah, but right. I'm not having those conversations with her yet because I feel like she needs to explore. Like I say, it's weird. I'm going where she came from, and she's kind of going where I might have come from. But I do feel that, back to the idea of marriage... Is there a kind of respectful, a respectful conversation going on? I think there will be in due course right. because... I'm starting to learn what, uh, well, I know that I'm going to come to learn that marriage is two becoming one body in the name of Christ and all that, all that. And just on you uh, questioning your willingness, unwillingness to surrender, uh, you're hearing these teachings about being against kind of new age spirituality in certain, yeah. certain areas. You're not resisting, you're, kind of, you're buying it. It sounds like well, you bought that. No, this is the only sticking point for me. This is where it gets tricky for me right now. I hear now. suspicion in your voice, though, about New Age. Mm, only from what I'm recently listening to, but then... From, like, all the Christian, but... The idea that it's this way or no way... Not into that is, quite yet. It's, it's a lot to swallow. <laughs> it's a lot to take on, right? It's a lot to swallow. <laughs> Mate, there, might be, there might be tens and units of people... Uh, Giving a little smirk as you say these words. Uh, they might be watching this. <laughs> I'm, but I'm, the thing is, I'm willing to explore. But the idea that a part of me wants to be like, right, <laughs> and I know this is absurd. I put Christ first, but it doesn't mean I can't explore other things as well. Sure. But that's like kind of. But then I know that that might be absurd. You know. That doesn't mean I can, you know, meet a shaman and do a ritual. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't <laughs> kind of like a session of cannabis and cocaine. On the no, Saturday, I'm not going to yeah. go back to the substances at all. Yeah. But like, but cool I've even heard, I've even, this is what concerns me. I've heard some Christian doctrines express like things as simple as breath work. No, a welcoming in evil spirits. I've not heard about breath work. No, so. and I don't, I don't know whether this is some YouTube ridiculousness okay we're going to hit these branches nothing I can do about it however I wish I had the spirit of Joe my previous guest uh, oh no no we're alright we're alright so yeah but Ronnie we ain't capsized yet you know? no we're not that's because I've left it up to you <laughs> you must have said the right prayer while I was getting the stuff <laughs> um yeah so go on so we're going to mass every Sunday at Biggles Way yeah and then the week before I turn up to Latin mass I decide to make the call that at the end of this... So I came to Latin Mass Sunday just Oh, yeah, we're to June, aren't we? So we're not far away. Yeah, yeah. so let's fast forward to the week 
before I come to Latin Mass, yeah. I go to normal Mass, and I decide that day and night before I'm going to ask the priest and inquire about the process of baptism tomorrow. Yeah. And I did. And sent him a follow-up email. But then so I, you asked in person and then yeah, you personally you back. at the end, yeah. I said, "What, you know, how do I trigger this process? What goes on?" And he asked me to send him an email, a bit about myself and my intentions. Thirty pages and later, then we'll go from there. Well, no, I sent a nice, oh, you know. All right. But then a few days later, I meet Jamie in the gym. Sharp. Yeah. Pure chance. Pure chance. At I've pure seen, gym. No, not a pure gym. I've seen him there before, but we've never spoken. What do you make of him when you saw him first time? Not in a romantic way, Ronnie, but just... Um, yeah, just another guy in the gym that looked like he was just getting on with, you know, never, just nodded, never spoke. Yeah. But what caused us to speak this time was... Um, and I'm, sorry, how long ago was this, sorry? This was just over a week ago. Shut up. First yeah. time you spoke to him? Y- yeah, properly. Shame he's not here. Yeah. I think I got up from doing a set of something and my crucifix came out. Oh, yeah. And I kept it out for the next few hertz. And I think he clocked it. Crucifix on the end of rosary beads or just crucifix? Just crucifix. Yeah. Got it on now, yeah. Um, and then I noticed he had one on. Sure. And no one said anything until he approached me and said, oh, I like your crucifix. Right. And I said, oh, I saw yours too. And it's then we the got chatting, works. got chatting and then found out that he'd, you know, Devoted himself to Catholicism again recently and da 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 and then he brought up Latin Mass and invited me along after having about a 20 minute conversation in the gym and realising wow this guy's really serious about it and I explained my standpoint like I'm kind of getting drawn towards it and it's been building and building but you know one foot in one foot out but really getting drawn towards it and he just invited me along to Latin Mass. How was seriousness conveyed non-verbally? non-verbally and just also in the way he spoke about his journey of faith in the past six months just i don't know you know you just you were sold right. yeah you know you just think this guy it's good high in the intuition. cares about what he's talking about right now right no charlatan no charlatan <laughs> <laughs> that's good you yeah, i'm well impressed with a lot of the guys a lot there's quite a few young guys that Maybe you didn't meet them all, they weren't all there this week, but a lot of young guys go to the parish and like solid dudes. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well look at us. Get now. Me, mate. We are in You're solid. You sit down with any of them and they'd be like, What well, impressive. Yeah, I need to up it. This guy's Even doing this. The moment I spoke to that Sebastian fella. Who was that? Afro ish. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was straight in with like mate. rich conversation mate. within like ten seconds of me shaking his hand. And he's not the only serious Sebastian, there's a few of them. Yeah. Yeah, he's a great guy, look, the French guy, super guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Impre- each of them impressive in their own way. Absolutely. Um, no, go on. So go on, what did you make of Latin Mass? I heard it was a low mass, and there's two different types of mass. Yeah, that's right. I found it like, I don't know what I was expecting, but it was just a lot of a priest at the front with his back to us saying p- quiet prayers. Yeah. And it was almost surprising at the... Not, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but that was a surprise to find like so, a so lack of interactivity. Like there was a quick homily, but mainly it was just us watching a priest with his back to us say some prayers under his breath. It's the equal and opposite of the Pentecostal experience. Absolutely. <laughs> And I just wondered, like, is this just like a break this week? <laughs> like, no, do we get back to it next week? <laughs> what, we do high fives and chats to you and stuff? No, yeah. Uh, what so did, I'd be interested to know, like... What did you make of it versus the Pentecostal experience, which is kind of the other end of the spectrum of... Well... Feel good. Yeah. Music. Well, hugging, yeah. Maybe was the hugging at your experiences. The thing about... The, th- the difference is, it feels more genuine... Because I feel like them Pentecostal things are almost just another form of entertainment. And you might as well go to a music concert. And I feel like if you, that just doesn't feel real. So in comparison, although I was like, oh, give us a bit more than just you praying with your back to right, us. Right. That feels more like this is serious ceremony with Christ in the room compared to people jumping around singing and clapping, which makes you feel great. 
Yeah, Don't yeah, get yeah. me sure, wrong. Sure, sure. So it's but like I'm not fix, sure that yeah. communion with Christ is supposed to be entertainment. Hilarious that you're saying that. <laughs> 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 oh, and what, what would you, because you've been to the the new mass, if you, if you want to yeah. say, uh, bold up. now the old mass here in Bedford. Yeah. Any huge thoughts on the difference between them? Um, or you'd be indifferent, you're like, I'll, I'll take either, blah, no, blah, blah. Um, I'm still intrigued. I've only been to one Latin mass. I'm still more, unless that's what happens every week. You'll be so. Uh, I don't know if there's a high mass that I need to experience. Yeah, the, or, oh, well, there is a high mass. There's a, you could go to. I feel like I just want to explore this Latin mass a bit more. I've only been to one. Yeah. But I suppose I was getting used to the other. Is it a new mass? Yes. Yeah, I was getting new. used to the format that they did. Sure. And, and In just English. A, a few readings more out of the Bible. Yeah. You know, lots of prayer, uh, singing hymns. Yeah. A homily, which we had anyway, which was a great homily the other day, actually. So you may well have gone to a kind of high, because there is a high mass and a low mass for both types of mass. Yeah. Uh, so there would be, a, if, if you went to a high mass for the old mass, there'd be a lot more singing. And yeah. The interaction bit would be the singing. There wouldn't be any, come up to the front and introduce, there wouldn't be any No, there wasn't that going on at yeah, the new yeah. mass either. No, no, no. But there was people going up and reading yeah, yeah. short passages of yeah, Paul or whatever. Yeah, there's none of that. The priest kind of does it all and we're the... We're the riffraff. So it's a lot more, I'd say it's, a, it's even more still. I thought yeah, Pentecost- the low mass is the real quiet still I thought still Pentecostal mass. to new mass was a, like... A big leap. And now I feel like this is <laughs> an, equally, <laughs> an equally... An equally... Yeah, hilarious. <laughs> I, I suppose that's why... I liked it. Mate, I'm, not, that- I'm not against it. I can embrace stillness nowadays, thankfully. Yeah, I think it appeals more to a man, and you do see that in the crowd, in the congregation. It's more, it, it does appeal more to men. Than it would st- single men than it would appeal to single women. Not that there aren't any single women that go to a TLM. What Plenty. you're saying, old mass would appeal more to. Yeah, yeah. Well, you just look around. You see a lot. Of, you, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, did you see quite a few? You tell me. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I noticed all the women on um, the majority had like. Yeah, a veil on. So a white veil is not married, and a black veil is married. Okay. And a colourful veil is. I've got my own style, but I'm probably married. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, just quietly all praying the rosary. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's kind of re- it's more reverent, I would say. You know, it's just you're there. Reverent, so you're, please. Reverent is uh, so when you go into a church, you kind of you don't wear outlandish clothes. You wear respectful clothes. Yeah. You, you conduct yourself in a respectful way. You don't start drawing attention to yourself. Because you it's keep, not about you. Yeah. yeah, it's not about you. You keep quiet. Other people might be praying. Okay. Hopefully, they are praying. Hopefully, you're praying. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's reverence. You kneel when you should kneel. If you yeah. cross the, so if you crossed one of the one of the rules is you go in, you should genuflect. What's genuflect? Kneel down. Kneel. Yeah, just do a kneel. If you cross On the, the one knee, yeah. Yeah, if you cross the center of the, if you cross past the tabernacle, which is the kind of gold you box. Kneel. Yeah, you kneel, yeah. It's and that of, does go on in the St. Peter's yeah, church. Yeah, we'll do, yeah. So that'd be I common Catholic. Got, I've not gone to that point yet where I kneel. I kind of do a little bow well, of my head. Well, a lot of people do that. Uh, but No, I, I, I'm not saying I wouldn't out of yeah, pride. Yeah, sure, sure. But that's like one step. That might step. be kind of a custom. It feels yeah. like one step at a time for me. Like, yeah, okay, sure. I've just started to accept that Jesus Christ might be the truth. Right, I'll kneel to him straight away. It's like... I don't know, I'm going through phases. You're getting there, doing all right. Uh, right, I think we should, Turn since around. we've arrived to last Sunday. Pardon? Since we've arrived at last Sunday. What's start, last Sunday? Oh, that you went to the Mass. Ah, We've caught yeah. up almost in time. Yeah. Because uh, what are we on now, Thursday? Yeah. I think we'll try and head back up the river. Yeah. Which has got a lot of weed in it, so... It, it's going to clog up the motor. But and you, you would like some help rowing? Yeah, we'll use the motor because it'll. Oh. We'll be there forever if you do rowing. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, so you bring the motor so you can yeah, motorise yeah, 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 yeah. back. Uh, so you've. Do you want me to tell you another interesting Mate, thing? Of course, yeah, An keep interesting talking, habit keep talking, that I picked up recently, yeah. which if you told me I'd be doing, Mate. I don't know if I'm overdoing it. No, mate. But basically, when I'm at the gym, I'm right now. I'm becoming very conscious of lust in yeah, me, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, you know, I go through life just eyeing up women and sure. just staring and all that stuff that we do. I'm very conscious of it right now, like more so than ever. When I'm in the gym, if I catch myself doing it immediately, I like tend to make the sign of the cross Mate. and say, "Lord, have mercy on me." Yes. And if you told me I was doing that two years ago, I'd be like, 
<laughs> no chance. But just instinctively, I'm like, I don't want to be doing that. And, and do you know what's scary? Yeah. Now I'm actually doing an actionable thing every time. I'm realising how often it is. It's all the time. Mate, this but it's good that it's becoming conscious. Mate, it's incredible. That this is massive surrendering of the will. Uh, that you even ex- you, you're accepting that there is a standard that you should not fall below. Yeah. That lust However, is a I thing. Fall constant. Yeah, look. That's the, that's the inescapable truth, mate, though, right? I always cite the... The guy that dies next to Christ, there's, you know, there's three crosses when Christ dies. There's two oh, thieves. Two thieves behind two him. Two thieves, right. So the church will say that one thief rejects Christ and one thief accepts Christ. Yeah. And uh, Christ tells him he's going to see him in paradise today. So we're, we're, some people will say he's the first saint. He's the first guy into heaven. Uh, but to get that repentance, to, to get into heaven... You have to repent, and he repents. He's sorry of the things he does. He's, he kind of acknowledges to the other thief, we've done bad things. Yeah. You know, it's a bit like 12 Steps program that you're on about. Yeah. And his, I think the church will say, the pain is in, because he's got nails in his hands and he's dying a painful death. That pain is in is the, what do you call it, the reparation for his sins, for his yeah. sinful life. So it's not like, you know, because Catholics will say you go to purgatory, if you die in a state of communion with Christ, even if you know, how do they word it? If I'm you're in good standing with God, like you've been to confession, and maybe you've only got, you have no mortal sins on your soul, if they'll say that. If there's no mortal sin on your soul, you still may have a debt to sin. So you go to purgatory to be purified of that sin. But you can, if you want, purify yourself of sin in your own in life just by fasting or yeah doing the things you're doing you're kind of making reparation for the bad things you've done to people yeah i've done that whole process hey, so look, and they'll say of the thief on the cross well the agonizing pain he was in was his reparation after the moment of repentance and then he's kind of he's in a fit state because he's accepted christ hasn't he so yeah. he's in a fit state to go to heaven look does he go to paradise or heaven or yeah i don't know i'm not a kind of theologian but no just to say that it's not a case of how good you've been in the totality of your life. It's more a question of have you repented? And how sincerely. Yeah, how sincerely and what amends have you made for sin? Yeah. Uh, you know, so even the likes of me, a kind of lifetime Catholic, I may have not made that much amendment for my sin, even though I've gone to confession and said, look, I'm sorry, and I do make an effort not to do it again. Have I done... Make Have I kind direct, of purged myself? Direct yeah, have I kind amends. Of, yeah, yeah, have I kind of died to myself enough, really? Maybe not. So am I in bad standing with Christ? Maybe not in a mortal sin sense, but do I need some purification? Yeah. So into the slammer, do a bit of time in purgatory. That'll be kind of ballpark Catholic thinking, which okay. I think makes sense. I kind of think all men accept, once they kind of come to Christ, I've got amends to make. And you've kind of said as much today, haven't you? you kind of, yeah, well, I've that's part of the 12 part, steps. Yeah, and it just seems Once like, I made that list and admitted it to myself, God and another human being, it was like, right, now go out and make these But you've amends. accepted that list, haven't you? You haven't said, yeah, what a load of baloney, I ain't got to do this. No, no, no. Because it was explained to me, if you go out and make 99 out of 100, but you decline to do one, then Mate, don't do any. Don't do any. <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit. So I kind of think, you know, not looking at women, it's just a constant battle. Yeah, know? and it's really big for me yeah, right yeah, now. It's been, look, welcome to the party of all yeah, yeah, yeah. red blooded men. But, no, but the, the consciousness of it. Before, I would just think that's a normal just thing to do. It. Well, it's kind of normal just, in the natural But it's law. normal to not feel bad about it. It's yeah. just what you do. But now it's like, whoa, no, I've got like, I've got like an intuitive conscience now that says, don't do that. Have mercy. Okay, well, I, I'll put it to you that you are beginning to accept rules and strictness yeah because and... I realise that otherwise I'm lawless and I'm bound to worldly p- fleshly yeah, pleasure sure, sure. that from my own experience of addiction I know sets me up for destruction and doom but... and so I'm willing to abide by principles and laws to feel clean and safe surely you would say then you know, it's, it's not just you with a history of so called addiction to cocaine or whatever it's the same rule for all of us. You of know, course. Like, yeah, yeah, just because, let's like, say, I've not got an addiction to cocaine. The rules still apply to of me. Of course. Strict yeah. rules, you would say. Uh, maybe I don't know them all. Well, I mean, just even that rule of do not look lustfully at women. No, is... but that feels right for me now. That's right. That doesn't feel like, oh, what? Oh, OK. I'm not, like, reluctantly. I want to abide by that. Sure. You, let's say if you listen to someone like Andrew Tate, who is kind of 
pro man, pro man must rediscover yeah, his kind of enough, place in the natural to order. An interview with him last night, but he would not be into what you're saying now. So I can, that's why I kind of think oh. he fails, man. The thing is, deep down, I think he would. I think he's just miscon. I just think his message is full of ego, but underneath, there's probably some values to find. Yeah, I mean, I'd say that. I'd say there's a lot of value for men in what he says, but ultimately, it's not. No, well, he runs a webcam business, so yeah, yeah, yeah that's sure, not sure. right. So I kind of think. I, I think well, it's, it's easy for him to say all this because he's making money off. Uh, lust. Yeah, <laughs> lust and sin and all this kind yeah, of Yeah, greed and lust. Things that sure. will ultimately drag a man down. Absolutely. Uh, and drag society down, because once, once a man hasn't got a kind of lid on lust sufficiently, how bad is his marriage going to be? Yeah, well... What are his children going to do this, when they find out? You know, And this is another thing. I'd rather abide to the law of God. Maybe I don't know them all. Maybe I don't know all the rules and regulations, so to speak. But I'd rather start abiding to that and abiding to the, the current Western societal values and cultural things that we just adhere to. Well, I know which way I'm going and what, what I'd rather pick. <laughs> Crazy character. You know? Mate, it's good to see Because it's all falling down. And there's only one way. How do you judge it all falling down? What kind of metrics? Well, do you... on a on a macro and micro scale, what the, the, the you know the movement of you know political elite towards globalism on sure. one end of the spectrum. And then at the macro. And then at the and micro. Not that you have to go into personal life and stuff like that, Ronnie, necessarily. Well, whatever. And then on the micro level, just just you've got all the. Agendas they push yeah, sure, to confuse sure. people. I mean, I'd say for the likes of us, just like ordinary guys, I think the world can be changed at the macro. On a micro level. Yeah, on a micro. It, uh, so I think the church would teach something like, I may not get it totally right, uh, the life of grace. Let's say you not looking at a woman when she walks past. That is a kind of. That's where it starts. Yeah, that's where it starts. And, and that is an act where grace comes into the world. Yes. And, uh, and that grace, who knows its purpose or the will of God, may be conversion of someone else or it may kind of redouble your efforts in your own life. Who knows what kind of... That's the bit where you don't get to know God's design on the no. world around you. But if you what? hadn't done it, there's kind of less... What, why should God improve the world? If me, the little guy, is not prepared... Not willing to have a psychic change. Yeah, to live by God's law. You yeah. Know? I, th- I, I would take the line, we get the leaders we deserve. You know, it's not... It's dead easy to blame global politics and all that kind of stuff. Well, this they, is... If you ain't just doing the basics... Yeah, and I'm totally aligned with you here. You, because you, you're getting the justice you deserve. I totally align because back to my father's political rants and leftist views and da-da-da-da-da-da-da... I adopted that and I went to do journalism at uni because I thought I need to change the world by exposing the corruption of the Which elite. Is no bad thing necessarily. However, now I realise that that's looking in the wrong direction. All I can do is transform myself. And if I actually want to help the world, have a psychic change and become a man of God and go from there and start doing things right in your day. Sure. Well, I, yeah, I, I totally you uh... You know, I'd see even you meeting Jamie is kind of like act of grace. Uh, you know, who knows whose prayers have been said or what's been done, but you know, lo and behold, you met the guy. Now I'm here with you, Peter. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm bloody bad. Having a first beautiful day. conversation. <laughs> Mate, crazy conversation. No, we haven't touched on Love Island yet, so we talk about that now. Mate, no, I'm joking. <laughs> well, look, so keep it serious. You've got your bird. I've got my girlfriend. Yeah, and you know. Whom I intend to marry. Yeah, if you, and so you've got to be. It, it says in the Bible, and it's a real tough one. Only the pure of heart will see God, and kind of makes most men weep. Uh, but that's how it is. You've got to do that kind of thing you're on about. Just, I have eyes for you, bird. Yeah, and that's not. I'm not doing that because, oh, I need to do right by her. Obviously, I sure, do. Sure, sure, you obviously do. Yeah, but yeah, of course. Uh, it's more so. Yeah, you and God. It's, it's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I, I swear, intend to marry her. I tend to only have eyes for. Yeah, it's all good of you that. say that actually, because it is God, your wife, or yourself, your children. Yeah. Well, yeah there is a natural order that the yeah. Catholic or the religious person should follow. Yeah. Uh, die yeah. to yourself. Yeah, die to yourself first. Uh, so, church has got some pretty stiff rules on girlfriends. Ronnie, come across any of them? Yeah, well, funnily enough, the first Pentecostal guy that took me to Pentecostal worship, yeah. he was trying to encourage me to like stay in a different room to my girlfriend.